Okay, a uh, few minutes before, but uh, let me start the second Pacific uh, Asia Pacific uh, Pacific Analysis and PDE seminar. Uh, my name is Yoshigiga of University of Tokyo. Today I will chair. Uh, so. Okay, every, I, I think we still have some time, but I think it might be a good idea to introduce today's speaker, Professor Ishii. Uh, it is my great honor to introduce Professor Ishii, Professor Emeritus of Waseda University. Professor Ishii is one of the founder of the theory of viscosity solutions which is by now indispensable tool to study PDEs, I think. He was uh, invited to several important international conferences, including ICM as a section lecturer and ICIM as a plenary lecturer. lecturer. He is one of the highly cited researcher of Thomson Scientific. He received several prizes. Last year, he received the first Kodaira Prize from Mass Society of Japan. He received the, uh, uh, he, uh, he, which is the most prestigious prize in Japan. This prize offered for lifelong contribution to mathematics. Today, he is going to talk on his ongoing, uh, maybe his, his recent result. The title of his talk is The Vanishing Discount Problem for system of hamilton Jacobi equation. I think now the time is almost uh, exact. So could you start, Professor Ishii, could you start? Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. I think so, everyone can okay. hear? Okay, Please. thank you. So thank you, Professor Giga, for, for the kind in introduction. And uh, I, I would like to thank the organizer of this seminar for inviting me this uh, talk and also uh, for creating this uh, uh, great opportunity of web seminar. And my thanks goes to also to Professor Hauer and Professor Giga for, for their help to, to make, uh, uh, to, to make uh, preparation to this talk. So let me start my talk. And this is uh, the first slide of my talk. And uh, let me, I might, I'm talking about the system of hamilton jacob equation, but uh, I start with uh, uh, the case of uh, sc scalar equation. And uh, probably I uh, spend most of the time for, for this equation, uh, but uh, I will try to talk about the system. Too. So this is my equation, and so first of the equation, and I call this equation as p, p lambda. And you see the lambda here, uh, lambda is applied to the uh, multiplied by the unknown function, and uh, this lambda is supposed to be given positive constant, and uh, in terms of uh, optimal control, this is called discount factor. And H is my Hamiltonian, and H is a function of X and gradient of V. And so gradient, and uh, as we will see that this equation has a unique viscosity solution when lambda is positive. And my, my main question, or rough question for this problem is the asymptotic behavior of solution of V lambda. So this problem has unique solution, which I like V, v lambda. And asymptotic as lambda goes to zero. And here is my assumption on the Hamiltonian. And first one is just continuity. The second one is convexity in the gradient variable. Also the third one is coercivity in the P variable. So as P grows up, H grows up uh, uniformly in X. And, uh, and very easy cons consequence is that 
convexity and cohesivity imply the existence of constant, small, maybe small constant delta, so that uh, Hamiltonian uh, grows linearly with slope delta. And typical example of function h can be this kind of a function. So h of xp is uh, modulus of p to the power m minus f of x. f is continuous function. And uh, here the power is uh, 1 or greater 1. And uh, under this uh, assumption, we can say that uh, when lambda is positive, my problem has a unique solution. And moreover, this prob uh, problem has uh, satisfied the maximum principle. And uh, this observation is today important, and uh, uh, which is a rather easy consequence of, from my equation or maximum principle. So first one is lambda times V lambda constant lambda times V lambda, this family is uniformly bounded. And then this family uh, function V lambda is equicontinuous, uh, equidiffused continuous. To see this uh, uh, proposition, so you look at this function H of X zero, this is a continuous function and I'm, I'm studying today on the flat torus in uh, n dimensional factor, so this is bounded function, so we can find some constant c0 so that this inequality falls. Oh. Then you look at this expression, this is just, in, indeed this is just c0, and this is h, by this inequality this, mm -hmm. this is non-negative. Non and similarly this uh, by, uh, this is uh, less than zero or co yes, equal right. zero. And using, com uh, so now you look at this as a function of x, constant function, satisfies uh, uh, super, super solution inequality for my equation. So we have this uh, by comparison, we have this, and similarly we have this, so that uh, we get to uniform boundedness of lambda times v lambda. Uh, on the other uh, next, so we uh, come back to this inequality and we use this inequality to my equation. Then we get to uh, this uh, bound on the gradient of my solution. And here we know that this is a supernorm and this is now bounded independent of lambda. So from this, we, we get uh, equilibrium property of the family of v lambda. Now uh, I introduce my Lagrangian. Lagrangian here, uh, function L here, and uh, function of x and c. And this is uh, the definition, and this is uh, uh, con uh, conjugate convex function of function h as a function of p. From this definition, it's immediate to see that L is a convex function in c variable and lower semi-continuous in both variables. Moreover, we get uh, some property of uh, this function. One is uh, uh, superlinear growth in C variable of function L, which is can be seen, you, you insert P, you insert this vector in, into P, then you get this. And uh, again, you use this inequality into here, then uh, when modulus of Cushy, Cushy is less than or equal to delta, this is non-positive, so you get uh, this inequality. So when X is uh, uh, in the neighborhood of the origin, then this function is uh, uh, not plus infinity. In general, this function can be plus, takes uh, plus infinity. This is a uh, property of Lagrangian. So now to I, I discuss the problem related to P lambda. So 
let assume the following formal expansion. So this is uh, expansion in, in lambda. The first power is minus one, then zero power, zero power one, and so on. And we plug this expression into the equation, then we get uh, uh, here equal zero. And you look at this term, and uh, I'm going to take uh, lambda to zero. So if this term is not non-zero, then this grows up and uh, H is, then because of coercivity grows up, and on the other hand, other term stays bounded. So you cannot get equality uh, unless this is zero. So this means that uh, this suggests that uh, this term should be constant. Then this term disappears and in the limit you get uh, this uh, equation a0 plus h of x d a1. A and so you, you, you may look at this equation as hamilton jacob equation and unknown is uh, a1, function a1. But uh, uh, if you look for this uh, expansion then a0 is also unknown constant. So we have two unknown a0 and a1. And this kind of problem is called ergodic problem or additive eigenvalue problem. And to, to repeat, uh, we change notation a little bit. And this is ergodic problem E. And here, question is to find uh, constant c and uh, unknown function u, unknown c and so unknown is pair of constant c and the function u. Regarding this problem, a classical result is due to Leon's Papa Nicolas Baradan. And uh, in this theorem, you don't need to assume to complexity of Hamiltonian, but uh, uh, without complexity, you get this. Uh, you get the solution. You, you can show that the existence of the solution of the ergodic problem, and moreover, the constant c is unique. And this constant is called critical value or additive eigenvalue or ergodic constant. There, so the proof is to show that for some uh, constant c and u which will be solution of this uh, lambda minus v lambda, neg negative of this function converge to constant c uniformly on our end. And then uh, this function v lambda uh, adjusted by some constant dependent, depending on lambda, this converge function u uniformly in both convergence is uniform convergence. And uh, since C uh, critical value is unique, so this convergence is for the whole uh, sequence lambda. When lambda goes to zero, you get convergence. But uh, here uh, we use, or they use uh, Ascorian theorem, so they can get only convergence along subsequence. Now, the ma main question today is uh, this. Does the whole family of V lambda plus lambda inverse C converge to a function as lambda goes to zero? The difficulty of uh, proving this with uh, giving positive answer to this problem is uh, the fact that the ergodic problem E has multiple solutions. And for instance, if you use a solution of uh, E, then U plus constant is a solution. Also, if you consider this kind of simple equation, du dot du minus d psi, where psi is a given smooth function, then this, uh, this is a factor, so du, zero is uh, give you a solution. So constant C1 is solution. And also uh, Psi plus constant is a solution. Um, moreover, we know that the mean, mean of two solutions are also solutions. So this is also, so we have three kinds of 
um, solution for this problem. Now, so general comment is that the ergodic problem arises in ergodic control problem, also homogenization of Hamilton Jacob equation, also in the large time behavior of uh, viscosity solution, uh, solution of evolutionary equation. And actually, we have good result for this uh, main question for scalar equation, but it's this result which is obtained by the Bini Fati Triaga Zabit in 2016. So we make our assumption C will be the critical value. Then we have uh, convergence for, for the whole family of this uh, function. So in the in the previous result we have we have sequential sub uh, sequence for subsequence, uh, convergence for subsequence, but now this is a sequence for a convergence for whole se sequence. However, if we remove the assumption H1, this is not anymore true, which was uh, shown by Giliotto recently, and he, he constructed a counterexample in which, uh, of course, Hamiltonian H is not convex. So here is some com uh, comment on related work. So th this is, uh, this paper includes a previous uh, main result. And this one studied uh, same problem on bounded domain when with Neumann type boundary condition. Here they studied uh, viscose second order Hamilton Jacob equation, viscose so called viscose Hamilton Jacob equation to get a uh, positive result. And here they extend the result to, towards uh, non convexity in the direction of uh, pos positive answers, seeking for positive answers. So the assumption is quasi convexity of Hamiltonian with some additional requirement. And then uh, Mitake and Tran and myself studied a fully nonlinear case. And we also studied uh, bounded to, um, problem on the bounded domain with boundary condition. This is just I mentioned the uh, counterexample. So when they get uh, positive results, they all uh, depended, the results are all depend, uh, technique are depending depended on the mother major or its generalization, generalized mother major. And here, let me review the proof of theorem. So mo mostly following Darwinian and et al. So first script P notation, P denotes a positive measure, Borel measure, and which is uh, probability measure. So total measure is one. And P1, uh, in one here indicates uh, integrability condition uh, of this. So when you integrate uh, models of Xi against mu, then it is uh, finite. And uh, here I use this notation to express the, this kind of integral. So the pairing of mu and models Xi means integral. So here I use this notation. And then next I introduce closed measure, which is uh, closed uh, something related to mother measure. So we fix Z and lambda, and then we keep additional requirement for measure in P1. So this is additional requirement. So psi is C1 for any C1 psi, and we request this integral against mu is just equal to lambda times psi z. Lambda z is here, so this is constant. And this ex expression can be seen here. If you write this H using Lagrangian, then you get uh, this expression and this expression uh, appears here. So in some sense, th this uh, 
this uh, major maps uh, this one to to this. So, in some sense, you you don't you, using this new you, you you forget this. When lambda is zero, the condition is a little bit simple, and we we don't see z anymore. So for C Z zero, I write C zero, and then we have this uh, representation formula for the solution. So here lambda is positive, and then at at the point Z and the lambda, we get this uh, representation. Minimization. Another word, we have minimization formula for the solution this way. And th this is uh, not just not just inf but minimum. So we have minimizer, and minimizer is called a discounted mother measure. The set of mother measures and will be written this this way. And when lambda equals zero, we have this, which is uh, in some sense origi original one by, by mother. And uh, this is sort of limit of this formula. So if you take limit here, then you get minus C. And formally, this is uh, limit uh, condition as a verb. So in, we have a sort of continuity at, uh, at uh, zero. And the minimizer of the optimization program above is called mother major, and uh, the set will be denoted by M. And here after, I assume that C, constant C, critical value C is zero. To, uh, in general, if I replace H by H minus C, then we get this situation. Then uh, Lagrangian of mine will be H uh, L plus C. I mean, when uh, we make this change, then Lagrangian will be uh, original L plus C. And in this setting, in, in this setting, C equals zero, we get uniform boundedness so we learned. And uh, it can be shown relatively easy. So we, we take uh, any solution V zero of the elliptic problem, and choose constant so that uh, modulus of V0 is uh, smaller than C. And then you see V0 plus C non-negative and V0 minus C is negative, uh, non-positive. And uh, this uh, uh, you see that this function is a sub, uh, super solution of this problem. And this is a sub solution. The first term which lambda has is here for this positive and here for this negative. So, and by comparison, we get this. So, this is in boundedness of V lambda. And then we use uh, Ascorial theorem, then we, we can find the limit function along subsequence of the family of V lambda. And uh, all the limit I denote by set. V and as I so we have uh, non non emptiness of this set. So what uh, to prove theorem three? It is enough to prove that uh, we is uh, a simulator. To do this, we use uh, another measure. So as uh, proposition is that we have uh, this inequality for for the limit function v and uh, mother measure mu, the coupling of mu and v is non-positive. And then we, we can prove that uh, for any limit function v and w and any point z, they are correspond to mother measure mu. For this mother measure mu, we, we have this inequality. But uh, we can apply to this, this inequality. So we can remove this term. And now Z is anyone, and uh, V and W 
anyone. So we find the identity. So the, at least this way, we can use mother magic conveniently to get conclusion. So this is, uh, but here, here is some proof of this, but uh, proof is not so, so difficult, but to, let, to, to save the time, let's skip this and then also Davini et al. had the true representation result for the limit one is just uh, something you see you can get this kind of uh, frame which is this but uh, let me skip this at this moment and uh, here is some remark about the uh, way to get to theorem four in the paper by the vignette and at all they took very natural way which is uh, kind of uh, uh, formula from optimal control or dynamic system. Uh, one is one called value functions or one called Hoplux Benic formula. And they use this kind of uh, um, argument of optimal control to find the formula. And then Mitake Tran used a joint method due to Craig Evans and uh, Mitake Tran and myself used convex duality suggested by Gomez and uh, later we realized that uh, Mitake Tulen had a similar result as uh, what Go Gomez get, got. And uh, so in this paper, in this work, we use so called minimax theorem. And uh, Gomez basically uses uh, convex, uh, I don't know, <coughs> using co convex conjugate between, uh, okay, let, let's skip. But <coughs> anyway, mm, a good point of uh, these convex duality argument is that uh, it the idea is belongs to functional an analysis and uh, it is easily adapted to different situations so that uh, they, they can adapt a second order problem and uh, non I, I don't talk about this one today and there's also system of EDEs and the good point is that uh, you, you don't need to study deeply the underlying dynamics. So here you have to uh, study a little bit on optimal uh, system of optimal control, but uh, just here on functional analysis. Recently, Sikonori and myself studied Hamilton Group similar problem on unbounded domain. And uh, there we again use convex reality, but in the form of uh, primitive Hanbana hat separation theorem. And one comment for convergence is that uh, uh, because of this uh, gradient estimate uh, independent of lambda, we, we can claim that uh, all the measure in this set is uh, support of measure uh, support, uh, in a common compact subset of Tn cross R. So we are as a e, uh, easy to make uh, as, to take how sequence which converges weakly in the sense of mother measure. Now um, let me discuss about uh, system of Hamilton Jacob equation. So I will talk about some recent result with Tianjin. Uh, and so the problem is now system looks uh, very complicated. So, but anyway, change is uh, more equation and uh, this is uh, V1, basically equation for, for V1, but here you have Hamiltonian H1, see the all of 
V means VI. And uh, second one, but uh, crucial point here is that uh, first equation only sees a uh, uh, first com component of V, a gradient of first component of V. And second one only sees the first, second component, uh, second component of V. Because this is a kind of V V two equation and V M equation, you find just this. And for simplicity, I will write uh, uh, this equation as a single equation. But uh, this now V lambda is a vector vector value, and the Hamiltonian h is a vector value. And uh, I call this equation again P lambda. And then so the first assumption is the same as before, but uh, we have a new variable, but anyway, continuity. And the second one is uh, passivity. So I switch one and two and three here before I discuss uh, the H2 convexity that here, passivity. Passivity is uh, uniform in on the bounded set of X and U. Uh, thing, one point is that uh, because of, uh, um, we have to include the linear coupling. So we, we cannot assume that this function is bounded below. And uh, third one is convexity. Now convexity is both variable P and U. And the uh, fourth one is the monotonicity assumption on the mapping of uh, Rm to Rm as a function of h. So last variable of h as uh, this kind of monotonicity. So this is explanation of monotonicity. So we choose two uh, m vector and then we take the difference and uh, look at the uh, component and assume that one component is not non negative and the uh, maximum is taken at the index k then for the index k hk is greater than hk so hk u is greater than hk v and uh, so under these or no Condition five is kind of ergodicity problem, but uh, here we assume existence of solution with right hands by zero. So we we don't need to discuss by, the, by this assumption. So then we have this uh, convergence, which is similar to uh, theorem three for the scalar case. And of course, V0 is again the solution of this. And in the case of linear and linear coupling, and coupling when coupling constant, coefficient are constant, this kind of result was obtained by the Vinian the middle view. So maybe here, crucial point is we may consider this is generalization to the uh, nonlinear coupling and also maybe the yeah, space venting coefficient case. Now these are the simple example which condition one to four applies. But to to, to make sure five, you have to choose carefully this uh, right hand side. But uh, so th this is uh, linear coupling with constant coefficient. And this is nonlinear coupling. Just I put plus sign. So this is positive part. Uh, so this is max of V1 minus V2 and uh, zero. So this satisfies the monotonicity. And this is a stupid example, but uh, so this is the only equation, uh, this equation is uh, only for U1 and this one U2. So conclusion is trivial, uh, trivial 
since uh, if you put lambda equal to zero, this has a unique solution. But uh, now by by our formulation, that uh, monotonicity, this equation will will be inside our uh, framework. And to explain a little bit about the uh, proof, uh, we have more than 10 minutes, okay. So let me write uh, i for the index set. And uh, my Lagrangian is a i, which has a variable x c eta, and which is a <coughs> convex conjugate of function HI or, or as a function of PU. And then something new is uh, that you, you consider this uh, convex set in R, Rm, where condition is uh, the sum of uh, all element uh, entry are non negative. And uh, when J is not I, this i if then eta j should be non non positive so that means that eta i should be non non positive but non negative then uh, without uh, previous assumption of four and five we have characterization of uh, condition four so h is more than if and and if Eta is not in, in this set. So outside of this set, when eta, when eta is outside this, then your Lagrangian is plus infinity. This is uh, characterization of the monotone property. And then we introduce this function, t lambda eta plus lambda inverse time multiplies the sum of eta j. So you, you see the same expression as before. So if eta is in this set, this is uh, greater than one or equal to. And then the one reason, maybe crucial reason is that uh, why I introduced this uh, strange function is that uh, when you add this uh, constant vector to your function u, then this uh, you have this kind of in, uh, invariance. So this give this t lambda gives kind of uh, this kind of invariance. And here I, I didn't explain this notation, but this is um, Hamiltonian given by pi. Now phi is a function, maybe convex function in xi and eta. So sort of Lagrangian. Typically phi is a lie. And so and so uh, let me introduce uh, P lambda, which is a uh, uh, correction of uh, mu i. And uh, uh, each mu i are uh, positive or major. On, on this set. And uh, this measure is such as integrability condition and the normalization, no, normalized uh, identity, this identity. And then P, P0 is uh, defined similarly, but uh, you see if you put lambda here, zero, then this blows up. So you just uh, delete this term and you put one here. So with this, we introduce cruise measure at zk lambda. And uh, so cruise measure mu is uh, the one inside p from the set p lambda, which satisfies also this condition. Here, lambda kz is fixed, and besides any smooth function, um, psi i is a comp component, and here 
in a product in Parvem. So you see the something. Mm. I don't remember. Yes, you see not here. Okay, let's go. And with this uh, closed major, we get uh, a representation formula similar to scalar case when lambda is positive. So we have uh, this uh, representation of this uh, value. And this minimizer of the uh, minimizer of this uh, problem mu is called a discounted mass of major and the set of discounted mass of major will be denoted by m g k lambda. And uh, now uh, I'm explaining the proof of the convergence result and uh, the crucial point is uh, theorem nine to get theorem nine. And so I later, later on, I know uh, from now on, I discuss this proof of this theorem. So first thing is that I, I have to make the domain of major, uh, support of major to be uh, on the compact set. So here we fix lambda, that means we have one solution V, uh, v, v lambda, and we have uh, uh, Hamiltonian is coercive, so we get the uh, boundedness of the V lambda and dV this way. So Lipsch cont we use the Lipsch continuity to bound it, bound it to, uh, the fact that this is bounded function, continuous function. Then we can reduce the problem or we change the Hamiltonian so that uh, New, for the new Hamiltonian, we have uh, this. Uh, can you hear me? Hello. I hear you. I hear you. Is it okay? Can you see me? <laughs> I cannot see you. Oh, me? Oh. Yeah. I can see. I Are just stop I, this. Oh, okay, good. Okay. So, now I'm ready. So, basically, we are uh, continuous situation. Lagrangian is continuous, but the uh, domain of Lagrangian is now on the complex set. So, corresponding measures should be, should have support on this set. So, things become very nice in, in view of uh, if this representation theorem of uh, um, dual function to, to the, this continuous space of continuous function or also the weak convergence of measures. Here Ki is some, you choose some ball in, uh, you, you don't need to choose ball but uh, Anyway, large uh, closed set here and here, and I call this Ki. Then we have a very good situation, and we adjust everything here. And now I introduce a pair of sub, -sol sub solution and uh, Lagrangian. So we choose fun family of function u, ui, and function. I, I. And uh, the, using phi i, we define Hamiltonian. Uh, now phi i is not Lagrangian, but the uh, super taken over this. And you consider this uh, Hamilton Jacob equation, and you assume u is uh, sub solution. So typically, you take l and v lambda, then you get this. And now my claim theorem three is uh, if it is true, when we replace CZ K lambda, 
by by this set, which is cons which consists of mu in C Z lambda with support mu i in this T T N cross K i, and we define similarly P K P sub K lambda. We put at this condition for uh, measure here. Then we introduce this uh, uh, function plus, and uh, this is phi is uh, in this set, con continuous function in this set, and this is a function of eta. He, this, fun this is function, eta. The one is of the four element, uh, all the element is one. And this is, you can see that this is closed convex cone. And then with this cone, we, we can characterize our closed measure using, uh, using this inequality. This is, so this mu is sort of a dual cone, a member of dual cone of cone G. And this is a pictorial proof of uh, existence theory for mother major, discounted mother major. So this is my uh, convex cone G. And then I prove that uh, this uh, function, which is uh, in this set, is also on the boundary. Then we show that uh, this set has uh, interior, non-empty interior. Then we can find non non zero in 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 a normal at this point and uh, this constant since this is uh, uh, cone and this is uh, on the boundary this set with t non negative stays on the boundary so this is you have uh, half line crossing this point. So the product, uh, in the product new and this is zero. It's, on the other hand, a product of this and any member of this will be non-negative, non which says that this inequality falls. And especially when G is this function, then you get to equality. And then by adjusting new, by multiplying, you, also you have to check that new is non-negative, new i is non-negative major. Then you adjust so that the uh, pairing of new and uh, this is uh, one. Then we get to, uh, uh, that is, that give me uh, this quantum as a major. Okay, it's time to, and uh, I just finished my slide. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Hmm. I have a problem that I, I cannot hear you. No, one second. Yoshi, he can't hear you. Okay, okay, uh, okay. Thank you very much for Professor Ishii. Uh, now the session is open to discussion. If you have any questions, uh, could you write in chat or raise a hand? Yeah. Raise the hand, please. Raise the hand, raise the hand. Yeah, thanks. Any questions? Yeah. So let me ask one question. What What is the role of phi? Is it the phi in your last part? Little phi. You have a little phi. Yeah. Phi is a kind of uh, um, ingredient to, to create a closed convex cone. And uh, this is uh, kind it's of fine. sort of 
generalize Lagrangian. Ah, this is a kind of Lagrangian in your yeah. system. Okay. Are there any further questions? Professor Ten has. Okay, Professor Ten has a question. So. Oh. Okay. Um, I guess in the case of systems, uh, you assume this on a, an, a, a system that the Hamiltonians are, uh, are independent of each other on the derivatives. How about in the general case? So, <clears throat> I, actually I have no idea. This is only the case what we can do. And I think if uh, you go slightly, uh, mean, meaning that, uh, for instance, you have uh, uh, derivative, derivative of v, v2, then it's already out of uh, scope of viscosity solution. And uh, uh, of course, you, you can work on such problem, but to, uh, at least this kind of argument will be very, very difficult in the sense that uh, you, you, you lose the uh, Martian principle in general. So mm -hmm. I, I have no idea. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. So Professor Chai, uh, Kai has a question. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Xiao, Xiao Shang Chai, Professor Xiao Xiao Shang, please. Uh, he has a question. Uh, maybe let me yeah. say, but, no. or Professor Chai, please. Or should I read your question? No. Any particular reason why people consider basic space TN? Please, TN. Yeah, why? why you assume a periodic boundary condition? Maybe it's a simple uh, problem. Uh, yes. For me, this is a simplest case without boundary condition. And, uh, and so the, uh, the point is, uh, is very easy. So it is compact, but without boundary. So this yeah. is often very so, easy. Yeah, compact. If you talk about RN, then it's not compact. Uh, so this is another problem. But if you consider TN, uh, it is compact and no boundary, so you don't worry about Neumann or DDC conditions, I think. So it's okay. Okay. Are there any further questions? Are there any further questions? So if not the case, uh, we, I would like to, uh, we have, we, we, we will close this session.